All right, Steve's, what's up? Uh, we're live from the ranch. I got an incredible fucking guest. And you guys know I've had some amazing guests. This is Chauncey Leopardi, but better known as fucking Squints from the classic Sandlot. I mean, this is, this is something, we're talking to a lot of fans. Like, there's no way my fan base, like I was telling you off camera, it's very much derived from a baseball. Uh, initially from a baseball, like the whole community was really the first to be fans of my shit. Yeah. But as it's grown, it's still, you know, even if you're in the world and you're a fan of Mike Stead, you've fucking seen Sandlot. You've seen Sandlot and you've probably seen it. How many people, everyone in here has seen Sandlot? Ugh, Multiple times? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's rare. It's rare that somebody hasn't. And when they do, everybody in the room just looks at them like they're an asshole. You know what I mean? Like, like for real? If, yeah. if, if, put it this way. If you haven't seen Sandlot, there's a good chance we're not going to be best of buddies. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be, I, I just, nothing personal. We're just probably not going to have a lot in It's common. un-American. It's like, it's, it's, it is un-American. It's, it's frowned upon. It's almost communist. You it know is what I mean? It's like, what? Leave it at that. <laughs> it is un-American. What's wrong? You don't like apple pie? Leave it at that. It's un-American. <laughs> yeah. I still hit people with the s'more what. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, dude, it's just, it's Once just a week. classic. It's a fucking classic. But I wanted to, I mean, dude, you have a, you got a fucking crazy story just, just from the few minutes we talked. I mean, moving out here at the age of six, you said, right? Yeah, six. How, how did that happen? Like, how, what, what does that entail? That means your parents, obviously, fucking guardians or whoever, knew that you should be in front of a camera in some way. Like, it's not like you're six and like, hey, mom, I want to, like, you know, no, I'm was, sure six-year-olds say a lot of crazy shit to their parents. Yeah. And the parents don't get in the car and fucking go to. It was just know? pure chance, bro. Really? I just was. Uh, I was in Dallas at the time. I was a little kid. I had long hair like down to my ass. No way. I was like, it's probably like four or five, and uh, I was with my aunt, and she was taking my girl cousin to some agency in Dallas, which is like super small market. This is the '80s, bro. Yeah. So you're you know in Dallas. It's like '85 in Dallas. Like how much television is really really right. going on? You know. So. Right. I go to this agency, they're like, oh, this kid's so cute, we gotta send him out on stuff, blah, 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 blah. My parents, like, they woke, my dad's a contractor, my mom, she worked at a, a dry cleaners at the time, and uh, they were like, yeah, whatever, we don't, we don't have time for that shit. They kept bugging them, whatever, and they, they took me on an audition. You and kept I bugging them. It. No, 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 the, the agency actually just kept, was like, yo, we got this thing, just take them to this thing and see how it goes. It's a national commercial, it's big, whatever. So I go, I book this big ass, like, national Hasbro, regional spot or something you know and then i start doing pretty much everything there is to do in dallas i just like you know mm -hmm. booking films booking this all this little regional stuff right. you know right. so we met an agent so you're from five LA. at this time or six? yeah like five five ish yeah five six fucking yeah. hilarious it is great yeah and then uh we met this agent from los angeles this chick mary grady she's i say a chick but she's you know i'm sure she's passed away at this point she's an older older right. woman but right. a big child agent at the time right, right. Uh, and she's like, you guys should come out for a pilot season and, you know, just see how it goes. I really like them, blah, 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 blah. To, to specify is just when a bunch of pilots in Los Angeles are being filmed. Yeah, I mean, it's the same, you know, it's like for auditioning wise, it's the big right. thing it's every time. year. It's like try to get a show, you know? Right. So yeah, pilot is obviously the first episode. These right. are like the trials for the networks. Right. And this is when that ruled everything pretty much, right. you know what I mean? This is before... An interesting thing to keep in mind is this is before fucking social media and the micro celebrity that everyone is now, meaning there's so many facets. It's so much easier to be like, yeah, I'm gonna get famous for my fucking room in my, in my room in Ohio because I mean, everyone can. But it's not back the, then. Yeah, that was it. You were locked into whether they wanted you to be on TV or not. I mean, right. you didn't have a platform. Right. Yeah. They made the fucking choices more or less for what it was. Yeah, bro. I mean, it was, uh, you know, mm -hmm. they fed us what they wanted to at the time. Right. Yeah. When you have the monopoly, you can do that. It's like they had it all. I mean, you know, but then you get Ubered. <laughs> facts. Facts. That's what happens. You know? That's what happens. You, get you don't pay attention. You, you had a chance to buy. You didn't buy. Now, mm -hmm. now they're selling you off for, facts. <laughs> for like fractions now of the dollar. Now you're like the product. You're not the entity. It's, <laughs> exactly. it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, life so, will pass you up. So, I mean, we talked about this. You've obviously talked about Sandlot probably more times than you want to even fucking mention. But I, I, I did a, a phone or like a radio interview for Memphis. I'm being at Memphis for a, a Redbirds game okay, tomorrow. Cool. So I did no, that earlier, but earlier yeah, I talk so about it a lot. This is now the second time today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so we'll keep it brief. But I mean, let's talk about it in a different capacity. What the fuck was going on on set? How was it? What was the experience shooting it? 
I mean, I mean, it was amazing. It, it was a ton. It was. A, it must have been yeah. an interesting set to be on, given all the kids and like. It was. It was actually like. Uh, it was very Peter Pan esque, and not in like a creepy way, but in like a, a big show, you know. Like for the time, I think I had a five or six million dollar budget. It's ninety two. It's a decent size for a kids film. They you fucking know? nailed it. Yeah, and like <laughs> all of those, the treehouse and the houses, like they built all that shit. That was like Hollywood craftsmanship when you were still building sets, bro. You build mm. a set and you're like, you walk in and you're like, oh my gosh, this is incredible, you know? Right. So it was a. It was as much fun as it looks. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, while you were shooting it and we sure. got to do it all day long for all summer you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you literally your your shoot from top to bottom was a summer Shut yeah up. it was a summer we left uh we left la and we started shooting the day after my birthday i'm i'm june 14th so it was Where'd june 15th at? salt lake city in utah yeah okay it's the only place that looks like the san fernando valley where we are now mm -hmm. in the 60s Crazy. So it's got the same mountain ranges, but it was a little bit right. further behind in architecture and build up. So right. it looked great. Right. And obviously after after the movie comes out, I mean, I guess slow it down. Like at this point, how old were you when the movie came out? I was 12. 12. Yeah. So you're 12 years old. You're in school. Yeah. Or not. No, I was in school. You yeah. in school. Uh -huh. The fuck were you doing in school? Like how how do you get just a fucking rock star in school? I mean, were you like yeah? Were you getting like blowies early <laughs> on? Like, were you were you active sexually at this time? I mean, I started to. I don't even know if you want to get in. Maybe maybe just tell me to fuck off if not. <laughs> I'm talking about when I was when I was 13 years old. Mom, mom's gonna hear this now. She probably didn't know then. I mean, when I was 13 ish, around that age, I started getting like sexually active. Maybe not fucking everything everything that's walking, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I was definitely like. Getting yeah, in like that 12, mode. 12, 13 is so pretty much the 12. Run. Yeah, yeah. And like, I thought I was cool because I was like the best baseball player in my fucking middle school. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that is. <laughs> you cool. know what I mean? So yeah, but like on a fucking mega scale, you're a movie star. You're a fucking movie star at that age. Yeah. So what? Like, uh, what exactly? The correct phrase is residual ass. What'd you say? Residual ass. That's the correct term. Yeah, it's residual ass. Did it's you get a trickle res down. A trickle down. It's residual a trickle down. Ass. Probably. No, now, my friends. Still... My friends got the residual ass. Yeah, yeah, they got all the trickle down. You guys have been getting. Trickle <laughs> I mean, down. You, you know, all... you know how that I'll shit trickle works, down banging right? Since, since 2011, you were raised off trickle down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that fucking body we're looking at. That's a, you were just born and born and fed, fed. I mean, literally grass fed. Yeah, the trickle down. It is what it is. Yeah. Hey, it's no, there's nothing. There's no harm in it. Don't hate the game. We love it. No, 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 don't. Um, yeah. I mean, just but just, that's the just, truth. Just in layman's terms, like what what was going on at twelve? It wasn't that big of a deal because it kind of went under the radar. You know, the film wasn't huge. I worked a lot after that, though. I mean, I, I worked consistently all the way through into my twenties after that. So, what do you mean um, the film wasn't huge? The film. Wasn't I mean, huge. when it came out, it was like it did thirty five million at the box office, which was you know great for what they spent on it, but it wasn't like some crazy huge success. Right. I mean, for a was, film that came out in being, 92. It wasn't being in like E.T. or Jurassic Park. No, not at all. Right, right, yeah. right. But over time, it's become a fucking keepsake. I mean, it's, yeah, it's made of, I, I believe it's made over uh, $1 billion. <laughs> $1 billion. <laughs> That's crazy, right? No, but like, fuck. So Man. when did that, I guess to slow it back down now, even though, all right, so so what? It made 35 million. You're in a, you're in a movie and it was amazing. Like it was great. And you were, yeah, rock, yeah, you yeah. were a rock star. Yeah, yeah. So let's just, let's focus on I'm saying like what was going on in your head if you can remember to what was uh what was life like like what was, I was a bad little kid bro I was running around trying to here. trying to gang bang and write on walls and shit to yep. be honest with you that's oh, life so I'm like from a, LA yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. This, you know so you so you took the so you, um, I'm basically an NWA baby because that's just yeah, the yeah. era that happened to be a thing Crazy. and this is what you know hip -hop I heard does. I heard a piece of a podcast as we were kind of getting prepared or just thinking about the conversation and you were talking, someone was talking about you were, I think it was one of the co, you know, one of the co-stars co now was talking about how you were always like the cool, the ringleader of like the group. Um, oh, in uh, a way, like on the, on the movie set. Yeah. And yeah. Like you were, were rap, you'd rap or like loved hip hop, right? Oh yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I figured that was kind of, that's why I'm, what I'm getting to now. So when you become popping in that realm, right? You get, you become popping in that realm. What is it a, translation into your lifestyle like what was it like were you just like fuck it? were you just like no no because you know I mean? i'm 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 super low-key like i don't approach it that's why i said it's always been like a trickle down for my homeboys because mm -hmm. 
even when it became cool, it was like, you know, I'm not going to walk in and tell you that I'm right, right. so and That's so from blah, 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 and this and that. I've been blessed to like be able to go completely under the radar and then have all of the other benefits from it that, you Interesting. Know, Interesting. It's like being a producer sometimes yeah. before the producers were in the limelight. Being right, a producer right, right, was right. the shit because... Yeah, as no, an you, artist, you got to deal with all the bullshit, the fame, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you're at the parties and everybody that's supposed to know who you are knows who you are. Facts. Facts. That's a good life. There's an interesting dynamic here that I'm, I didn't think about. You, what time, how old were you when it started to really pop off? I mean, that's just like, I mean, It really? was just like a residual thing? Yeah, it just slowly builds up over time. And then it's like, because like uh, what I'm what I'm getting yeah. at is you like you're just you're just like a grown man looking at what you did when you were twelve. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it really is this different experience because it's like, it's it's a different time. It's yeah, not yeah, like yeah, you're no, twenty no. and then twenty five where like it's still you know what I mean like you're developed to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah. You feel like that's you. Like when you look back at a picture, I look back at a picture of myself when I'm twelve. I'm like, I don't really even remember what it's like to be that guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's an interesting it's an interesting dichotomy. Because you had that really did happen, but like it would also you it's like kind of a moment in time that's not necessarily disconnected, uh -huh. but meaning it's like you know it's like kind of a, it's before you're an adult and then you're an adult when it like really starts to thrive. It's interesting. It's yeah. interesting to think it's about. better. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, it comes without all the fuck shit. It comes without all like yeah. the actual. We can just talk about the the you know the other part of it. What do you mean the other part of it? Just like you know. It can be pure for what it is, and right. I get to enjoy it more now anyway. So For sure. For yeah. sure. That's, an, that's a great way of looking yeah. at it. It's a great uh, relationship builder Definitely. and uh, icebreaker. I mean, you it's know a, what I'm saying? It's the, it's, it's the fucking ultimate icebreaker. It's like, yeah. what, it has to be up there with one of the best. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just like when it comes all, out, and especially it yeah. comes out organically, like they're like, you know, that's the that dude. that does it that's builds the, relationships, that's and that's that, that's right. life, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's all we could ever hope to right. to really do at the end of the day is just to, you know, exactly bridge the gap, make impressions on people, make like Jim Carrey said something really cool. He's like, I, I you know, I realized that I did something that was making people present the best version of themselves to me when they met me. Exactly, and. I never looked at it like that, but there's really nothing more. It's really nothing better than that when when you realize you're you're literally bringing people, bringing the best out of people. That's it. And they're wanting to present them best self, their best version of, of themselves course. to you. You know. Yeah. So that comes through the art. That trans. That's like the art. That's like the amazing part about being an artist of any kind. Yeah. When the art transcends and actually like connects it's people. It's euphoric, bro. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Different. It is. It really is. It's you insane. Know, that's it's insane. That's MDMA level of like, of release of serotonin. Facts. You know what I'm saying? That's Facts. what that's doing though. That's that face, bro. <laughs> Dog, you're talking you to somebody. You can't be mad who, about anything. Who literally you know just saying? got into like, I just, just, just got into like a spirituality, you know, evolution, I would call it mm -hmm. over the last few years. Okay. I was pretty like rugged around the edges a little bit in the yeah. sense of like, just, you know, worldview and just like it was kind of in my own bubble and like you know there was a lot of I wasn't ever, I was always a, you know I was raised really well so I like always was you know had manners and stuff like that but just like the way I thought yeah I understand and the way yeah. I saw things you know yeah. um but I a part of it was like getting into podcasts and watching Joe Rogan he's opened my mind to yeah. so many things are you yeah. a Joe Rogan fan yeah I'm a huge Joe Rogan fan bro Me too. I mean he's great bro he and he, he talks about the things that need to be talked about facts yeah no like that's kind of what that for me we don't. Was, I don't agree with him on every stance of everything that he yeah. is, but I agree with the conversation. Right. Yeah. That's no. I find dope, myself you know? agreeing with him a lot, which yeah. which which helps yeah. obviously. But it's not about that. Like you said, he's. I just think he's making it. He's he's kind of. It, if you really think about it, this is new form journalism. This is 100%. this is Joe Rogan like had Bernie Sanders on right. Yeah. That was an opportunity. That was a great look for Bernie Sanders. Meaning. I actually think if Joe Rogan actually wanted to go out of his way and be like, "Yo, I'll, Barack, I'll fly to you, like I'll fly to you as soon, the day after you're you're off your job, like let's have this." Like he'd have all the most, he could have all the biggest access, most organic, exclusive conversations. Because people want to talk to him. Yeah, and like think yeah, exactly, and 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 also his platform is the American people. Like it's, it's like true. it's like a pretty uh, fucking like right down the middle, like type of fan base where it's it, but it's so big it's the masses technically yeah i mean you have to be somewhat enlightened to to listen to joe because he's on 
He's for on sure. some other shit. Most for people sure. don't. For sure. You know, it'll miss like half the country because. For sure. But I'd be surprised, bro. Everybody on the coast is always thinking about the middle of the country and what's going on. But I've been traveling, doing this baseball stuff for the last couple of years. And uh, the, you know, the vibe is changing. Yeah. Everywhere, you know. Yeah. What do you um, ex elaborate on that? Just like the, the spiritual vibe and the evolution, the things that are like readily present here in Los Angeles yeah. and on the coast and then. Yep. You know, in the the artistic capitals. Right, right, right. It's becoming, you know, the internet has made things travel faster. So For people sure. are listening to the, the Joe Rogan experience. And I they're agree. listening to dudes that are, uh, you know, vibed out on a, on a regular basis. And they're like, oh, this, you know. Right. It's, it's, and it makes it... For me, it made like so. What I was getting to, you brought up MDMA. For me, like I had always, I had never done like I had party, you yeah. know, but I'd never really had even done psych psychedelics, and uh -huh. I just really like was captivated by like the amount of conversation he had about it. Yeah, um, and seeing somebody who I actually really like, who he is as a person and his overall outlook and vibe, yeah. seeing someone who's done these things and talks about it openly. Um, made it way easier for me to decide that, you know, it was time to do it. So yeah. I like went and did, we had an amazing experience doing it. Uh, just mushrooms and like LSD. Yeah. And, and uh, went out with like the intention of just, went out with the intention of literally that, like the purest of intentions. We didn't invite any bitches. Yeah. There was no, we barely drank. Like when well, I mean, there. it's not that that's not that party, you know what I mean? No, yeah, we went to Joshua Tree. The party Tree. is the party that she went to. <laughs> right, right. But it wasn't even like, yeah. it's crazy, bro. I guess I'm like a fucking tank. I, it takes a lot for me to like get whacked by shit. Yeah, I, guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I just had, I just had an incredible experience. It wasn't, I never felt out of control or like weird. Yeah. There was nothing negative about it. Uh -huh. But I also think that says a lot. You know, after seeing the Joe Rogan thing, I started consuming so much, you know, research and yeah. about, you know, the psychedelics, like the TED you Talks. You prepared yourself. Yeah. So I just, you should, I yeah. went into it with like such an expectation and an more, more so an intention. Plus being in a good headspace is really important. I think if you're in a bad headspace and you do it and you're around people you don't know and there's a lot of negative energy floating around the bars and the clubs, yeah, oh, yeah. you can have oh, yeah, a bad experience but like bro we went out had a fucking across the board everyone had an amazing experience that's good yeah i mean you guys were on the same page yeah and uh, do you do that shit or have you done that in your time yeah i've done quite a bit yeah but uh i mean i don't do it regularly but yeah. um it comes into my life when it's supposed to does that make that. sense yeah. totally it makes perfect with psychedelics sense. especially like heavy hallucinogenics mm -hmm. uh it's always came into my life when i'm supposed to to yeah. go on that trip and, on that next and have something revealed to me, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I use it like that. Have you? Uh, it's a vision quest. That's yeah. an amazing. That's yeah. That's a really no. That's real. Like so, I don't ever search it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, you had a reason to search it out and find this. I, and I felt it, it and internally. It. Like you know I, what I mean? Well, Joe Rogan like fell on my it lap. Called, it, 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 it called. It called me, you. but I, yeah. I heard it and I was yeah. like, yeah, like I, I could feel that I was supposed to do it. You know? Yeah, I'll know that like things are kind of like at a stage in my life where something is changing, mm -hmm. and then. Somebody will just be like, yo, let's do blah, 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 blah. I have, I could be anywhere. I'll be in Florida and somebody just randomly is like, yo, mm -hmm. I have the most amazing liquid mm -hmm. right now. We should do something. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, this is, this is the message. You know what I'm exactly. saying? I'm supposed to go trip out and figure <laughs> exactly. out the next step. <laughs> You're talking to guys who tour the world, like tour the, especially America. Yeah. We tour domestically yeah, yeah. heavy. Uh -huh. So we're all over the fucking, we're, we find ourselves in, very similar so we got a real peanut gallery i think this is the biggest <laughs> this is the biggest gallery we've had i think you're oh the yeah most, they're most they're most excited about you that's what's up we've Thank had you. a lot of i mean I, we have so many athletes around here that i think they're just like who cares yeah <laughs> so we want some we want some legends so yeah oh, all good what uh oh so yeah I, so let's let's go through a little bit now you get into your 20 you're running around kind of being a wild motherfucker in your teens in your 20s yeah, super young. I, I did everything fast though. So I got married at eighteen, and then had a, yeah, a baby at twenty one. And I saw online you had a you got a fucking seventeen year old right yeah, she's now, 17, right? Yeah, seventeen. And then a and then a three and a, a three and a one. Yeah. It's a huge fucking gap. Yeah, it's a big gap. We're gonna talk about Start fatherhood. Over. We're gonna talk about fatherhood a lot today. I yeah, can't wait. As you can tell, we're not very far along with our lives uh, <laughs> to that extent, and uh, we could use some pointers. I think. Yeah, we need some. I mean. So I had a fuck. I have a niece, 
mm-hmm. who's five, and I'm like literally captivated by her. I couldn't be more yeah, obsessed course, with yeah. her. So I just know I need to have kids. I'm just not even fucking close to like being ready. That, yeah. I'm an immature. I might sound mature, some, but like lifestyle wise, I still live a very selfish life. I mean, that's, you know. But also, like, I get it. Most people are like, yeah, dude, that's what happened. And then you just have a fucking kid. You know, it's not necessarily like you make this conscious choice, you know? Enjoy it, bro. Yeah. That's oh, I what, am. Yeah. I'm fucking enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> I've mean, had a fucking. Things definitely change. Yeah. I, will, I, will, I will tell you that much. Oh, I know. I know. I know. And it's it's been a part of like, so I was in a relationship serious. I told you okay. I dated yeah. Jose Canseco's daughter. Okay, yeah. You played fucking poker with, which we'll get into at some point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> For a long time, had a great relationship. Didn't end, didn't obviously progress the way we, we thought it would. Honestly, it was more about growing apart than anything. You yeah, know, just that's over life, time. Bro. Like, Things she happen. was much younger. And, you know, there's formative years there that, like, having somebody in your way, you know, that might not, might not just be not being able to do exactly what you need to do to, to form yourself mm-hmm. and to do the, the things you need to do. You know, that's kind of what it felt like over time. Are you pulling up a clip right now, Kilmer? Yeah, don't mind me. I'm just uh, pulling something up that needs to be shown. Yeah, we love it. Freaky. So you've been, I, I, we were talking about fatherhood. I, I need to know. So I was talking about my niece and Brielle. Yeah, I'm yeah. like obsessed with her. Um, what What was that like when you were when you were 21? Was it just it just kind of happened? Did you, were, did you get married? You said. Yeah, we got. I, I did get married when I was 18. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Different time. Different time. My parents got married. Not. I'm. I mean, you're in between me and my parents, yeah, yeah. obviously. But I'm saying different time and generation where like yeah. it really is a, it really is a factor now the fact like people ha- have to like now more than ever now more than ever stop squeaking stevie daniels um now more than ever like the time the generation the the reach that you have on your fucking phone yeah you break up with your girl you're on fuck you're on four apps with like six options to hang out with a bitch not even not even saying it like with me personally, makes it too easy right in general it makes it yeah, so easy yeah. which is a negative thing in many ways it's also a positive thing depending I mean, on perspective yeah, you know. thing you know what i mean it at the time you might, yeah <laughs> in hindsight in like, the moment theoretically <laughs> yeah. it's probably a bad yeah. idea exactly for life, no, no, but. i mean yeah no i mean not if you're in a marriage not if you're in a marriage i'm saying like no just in general yeah no yeah. i get you there's definitely uh it's it, crazy it has so its pros it's and a cons. different time so you yeah. got married what year do you even fucking know off the top I mean, I can figure it out if I got to do Fuck math it, right it. now. It's not yeah. void. And I was 18, so I think it was 2000, 2001. Wild. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy. Wild. And how long? How long? And you had obviously one. We had one, a daughter. You had a daughter. And then we broke up when she was one. Mm-hmm. So we had her when, when I was 21. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I think that was pretty much the end of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But and I mean, I was a, little, I was a kid, bro. A I was 18 kid. years old. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. It's fucking nuts. <laughs> so now you got you you guys break up and then 12 12 years later you had a kid another kid was it 12 or 13 no 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm putting 14, you on like 14, in my like dad and bad so dad 14 spots yeah right shy is three <laughs> it's been a yeah it was 14 years different crazy, crazy. well it's definitely different i mean i'm oh, totally. different you know what i'm saying totally. so dude i like i was just saying i that's kind of what was my point i i, I literally like i feel like i'm a fucking different person from last year and you will be, and it'll continue to get more and more, you know? It's fucking nuts. It's kind yeah. of the coolest part about growing up. I mean, I know I know a lot of people, like, I think societally there's, like, a weird outlook on age. And I think it's very it's very limited. I mean, they're fucking, they're, they're going the wrong way with it because to, to all right, I mean, if life takes its toll on you and mm-hmm. some people don't age as well as others. Right, right. But if somebody ages well, that's like a... That's a blessing, bro. That's, right. that's what life's about. For sure. And and societally, I think there's an outlook that's very limiting and hurtful to the to the people because they're like, oh man, I'm 20. I got to settle down. I'm 24. I got to get this job. Like, I think it breeds a lot of complacency and I think it breeds a lot of discontent as life goes on when yeah. they realize they're unfulfilled because they made safe decisions. Really. And I think, yeah. it, I think yeah. it, it's like looking at age in a way where it's like, experience is the best thing experience is the best thing i mean i get that you know it's harder to stand there's there's challenges it's harder to you know find yourself attractive you know like over over time i get that but i think by the time you start seeing that actually your actual looks fade like you're 
if you've aged properly, you understand that there's you so much more. You don't even more. care about that. <laughs> exactly. There's so much more to life. You have so much experience. Yeah, you, you just so found some other shit. Things to offer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, for me, that's being, it's been a cool part about, like, I mean, just aging in general, like, yeah, it gets better, bro. You, you realize, yeah, you realize it's, like, it's supposed holy to. Fuck, it's I didn't supposed know shit. to. It's supposed to get better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's what it is, really. Exactly. And you know, I love that outlook. That's exactly yeah. how I fuck I feel. It's crazy. Um, so, walk us back through now. You're in your 20s. You, you pro oh yeah, look at that. That's <laughs> me and Jose and the guys. You can look at it right here. Oh, y'all had a Sandlot pick too. We you literally right did here. it. Yeah, everybody, everybody does. <laughs> it. But we didn't even honestly. Did we? We didn't plan it to be like that. I don't no, think. I was. Uh, so, I, remember, I remember we took this photo. We were filming our television that's show. Dope. We were filming like a show. We 2016. had a show. 2016. Um, this is Mike Stead. It was called on the Esquire Network. Okay. And we just went and played. I played home run derby with Jose, and I want to fucking put this out there to the universe. And Kilmer, you got to fucking stand. You got to tell the absolute truth. You beat him on this day, whatever the fucking date is. It should be written down in history because I beat. So, me and Jose played home run derby. He took like two swings before he hit it out. Granted, he hit like 15, you know, like, you know, I threw to him for like 20, you know, 20, yeah. 25 pitches. But like by technicality, I mean, it wasn't a fucking full round. I don't know. But I literally went, I, I was a pitcher before. I wasn't a hitter. Yeah, yeah. Like I could hit, but I, I didn't hit in college. Yeah. I kind of make you choose. Like, um, and first pitch, just, it's on camera. It's yeah. on the fucking episode. Like I felt, I'm still smiling about it now because I'm not a hitter. I felt so. <laughs> Dog, I felt so cool. I was like, yeah, I just fucking beat it. It was insane. But uh, yeah, we were just we were just filming. We were filming for that. It was just kind of like us fucking around. Yeah. Because Josie, my my ex, was uh, a part of the show. Like uh -huh. it was a part of the whole. Like it was about our story more or less. Okay. Um, I, Bash brother, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, Jose's told me. Uh, so one night we were playing cards, and he told me the. Uh, the Oral Hershiser, like the Dodger World Series story about Kirk Gibson hitting the home run. And like, you know, obviously I'm from L.A. That was a big moment yeah. in L.A. history, sports history. Mm -hmm. And uh, you forget that like that was against Oakland. It was against Jose and Mark McGuire. They were crushing the Dodgers. Crazy. Jose hit a grand slam in that game, mm. right? Earlier in yeah, that yeah, game, yeah. he hit a grand slam. Crazy. So you would think that like, Kirk Gibson's little walk-off thing goes down in history. And he was telling the story and he was like, that was like that that hit was the turn of the 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 series. Like nobody could hit their ace. Right. He was killing it. Right. They were hitting good. And after that home run, they ended up like losing three games, losing the series. That was a crazy series. And you know, it was a insane. It was a tough loss. Insane. What the fuck we, we talked about a little bit. Walk us through Jose's poker game. What the fuck? <laughs> is, it as, is it as erratic as I, as I think it would be? Probably not as erratic as you think it would be because he's like, he's played quite a bit, yeah. you know, and uh, at all different levels too, I'm sure. So, and people act differently because it's him. So, poker's such a meta game, bro. That's like chess on a whole nother level because you actually get to control it, you know? I got to get into it. I got to yeah. get into it. I've never played. I mean, it's wild because it's like, it's controlled, but so uncontrolled. Mm -hmm. It's like the same thing over and over, but mm -hmm. anything's possible because mm -hmm. it's me reacting to you right. or just doing some dumb there's shit. There's a lot of human, yeah. It's, there's a lot of human shit going on. Crazy. With some luck factors and right. all types of stuff. It makes a crazy dynamic. Right. And you, you, you were playing with him out. How did, how did that connection happen? Uh, celebrity, like, poker tournament type stuff. I mean, there was, when poker was really, really big, there was a lot of that going on. So it was mm -hmm. cool to, like... Mm -hmm. hang out in that crowd it would be like all celebrities and poker players and athletes and whatever you know so we've been a uh, yeah we've done some of that stuff together right um so as far as the acting right you said you worked till what you were right in your early 20s or so just doing shit yeah i think i was like i think in my early 20s after freaks and geeks that was like i was probably like 18 19 mm -hmm. And I did some other stuff, and then like I still worked in like my mid twenties too here and there. But I was, you know, Fuck basically. Me, huh? uh, Fuck me, guys. Sorry. It's all good. It's no, all no, good. we're good. Sure, show you can. I, yeah, we could we could just fuck up as much as we want. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like what did it, what what was that experience like? Now, as as the acting continued, did you feel like you were fading an in interest in it? Did you feel like it was just becoming exponentially harder to get 
to get gigs? Did you? you no, know, it was like never hard to get what gigs. Were... I always worked regardless. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't into it. Yeah. So I like, mean, I, I wasn't into it for half the time that I, mean, I was doing it. That, that's what I wanted to get. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? I mean, <laughs> someone take this. Tell him to keep it down. Just, here. Oh, yeah, wow, that couldn't have gone any worse. <laughs> you know. Wow. The whole thing just couldn't. This, that's all going to be in the. Is it cracked? Probably. Probably even worse than it was. Yeah. I mean, what's it like when when you when you choose something, you know what I'm saying? You get older and you become an actor and you choose to go in and be a thespian. It's a little bit different of a story than like life chose this for you, bro. And then you get to choose life for yourself and you're not you're not really Yeah. You're wondering if Yeah. You're supposed to be doing the, what is the most common route or if you're supposed to be doing something else that right. seems right to you, you right. know what I mean? That's what I that's what I why why I asked that because you didn't make the conscious decision when you're fucking six years old. It just happened, you know? And like, you yeah. found yourself in this life, in this new place. Um, so, dude, I think, honestly, bro, I would probably do, I'd, I'd probably feel the same fucking way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I kind of felt that way in certain aspects. Playing with, baseball. Yeah. 100%. Because, let's put it this way, like, no, no one, I don't think anyone in their right I mean, not anyone in the right mind, but like it was such a long shot for me to be a musician. Yeah. Like it couldn't have been any more of a long shot, you know? So, like, I mean, even doing it, even doing it, and like actually, I got presented like kind of a crossroads at one point because I was still rehabbing. I just knew I wasn't as good. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would have got back to what I, as good as I was, maybe, you know? But I just had this gut feeling like I had just put out some songs and they were like kind of like going a little viral, like randomly. And uh, I kind of had to make a decision because you, you can't be a, you know, NCAA athlete. Like, there's a compliance issue with, like, making money, too. So over time, like, essentially, I had to make a decision. But the decision wasn't, like, the, the, like it wasn't as black and white. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. most people would have been like, nah, I'm going to see if I could get this arm right. You know, I was pretty fucking close to, like... Yeah. The big league, you know, getting a, yeah. if I had hadn't get injured, I would have been a pretty high level draft pick, you okay. know? So yeah. it was just like a very quick pivot, <laughs> an aggressive pivot yeah. for like my life and my family and like friends Everybody. are like, what the fuck, of course, you know? Yeah. But I think part of it deep down, like, I, I think why I'm here and why I've had this random success in a different place is because I just trusted like... There's, a, there's an undertone of like intuition and like letting life, you've mentioned it a few times, like, you know, life puts it there in front of me, like it shows me. It's your me, choice, bro. You know, yeah. and it's just like, it's really more of a perspective thing. Like, how do you look at the things that happen in your life? 100%. You know, how do you look are at them? Are they like, advantages or Yeah, or, or are they, co is everything a coincidence? Is yeah. everything you having bad luck? Is every, no, it's not, you know, and, I, and that's like. Yeah, you could have waited for the boat, but you jumped on the log, and the log took you somewhere. Yeah, Yo. it took me somewhere different. Well, they you know? say man, man plans and God laughs. Man makes a plan and God laughs. Yeah, because, I mean, you can't, you can't imagine where right. this is going to be. Right. Even right. when we set goals higher, higher, higher than, you know. Right. It's still, I mean, I think that's the fun part about being alive, though. I really do. Like, I, I know for a fact, like, I've kind of been on this wave for a long time. Like, my, yeah. my project, a while, one of my, my first project that was, like, pretty big in the grand scheme of things was called Closer. Uh -huh. uh, and the concept was, like, you're, you never achieve your goal. You just, get, you just get closer and closer and closer. But as you move closer, the goal evolves and the goal evolves. Yeah. You never, you never just, like, And so like, you stop and around. you're like, wow. Yeah, yeah. But like that's that's what that's like what waking up every day with a purpose is. If you have everything and you feel so complacent, I mean it's a balance. Like you don't want to be chasing and not happy with what you have. It's actually a perfect balance that I'm trying to. But well, you find I'm, out that the chase is actually the exactly the chase is the excitement. Exactly the, cha the chase, like the name of this podcast. I told you, it's you never know. Yeah, and it's just like that's that's the beautiful part. That's life, bro. Yeah, that's the real part of life. Yeah, these exactly. moments that we that we aspire to. Mm -hmm. That shit comes and goes really fast, and you're it like, does. okay, what's next? And when you're because in the, the when you're in that moment, chase. it's exactly it's like, what's next? You know? Yeah, that's crazy. I love that you see it like that's really that's kind of a lot of what we've. I didn't know how you know we didn't know much about each other, but yeah. it's really like right in alignment with most of the conversations we've been having. My whole point is this: like, I'm trying to. How, what the fuck is going on over there? <laughs> it's not the most natural thing to fuck. We'll be right back with You Never Know, You Know What I Mean, right after this urination break. There you go. 
light it up. We're back, guys. We're back and we're rolling. Um, so we're talking about this weed. This is my favorite weed, caramel it gelato. Um, what is it? Twenty two red. Twenty two red. Yeah. So, the fucking CEO, the owner of it, more or less, the owner of this, yeah, this, this brand is 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 who? He's uh, he's from System of a Down, right? Uh, is it the bassist or the guitarist? Yeah. His name's Siobhan. Sh- that's that's I don't I, know, I know offhand. But I want to get him on the fucking podcast. Yeah, I, no. dude. Every guy who comes over here, I'm like, yo, smoke this shit. Yeah, because like, it's not like I smoke like the real rich guy shit. You know what I mean? Like I got home, like my manager I got homies that like they're just like huge weed snobs, and like rightfully so. You know, like yeah. he's actually in the cannabis space. All my investments are in the cannabis space, and I, I've had amazing. Uh, really, I've had amazing. Uh, like, it was really. Only because like when life puts something on your lap type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, for sure. My manager, you know, is an amazing guy, uh, but he's amazing mainly because he's diversified so well. Mm-hmm. Um, he's and he's just a very diversified guy in general, and, and very connected in many, many little uh, sectors you could call yeah. him. You know, but the cannabis space is like he was in it early. Awesome. And he has, you know, he just has these like, you know, kind of. Uh, these in this input that I wouldn't normally be privy to, you know. So like I started kind of just like just going, following him around, and following some of his some of his investments. His moves, yeah. Obviously at smaller numbers, but yeah. like it's been fucking amazing. Yeah, I want to get great. just we're talking about it because you've been. This is kind of the space you're in now, right? You're growing. Yeah, I've been in. I've been in marijuana or the cannabis business or selling weed or growing weed since I was like twelve, seven. Nah, I mean. <laughs> The, I mean, realistically, the I built I built my first room to grow to grow weed, and I think like two thousand. You're and a I was legend. and I was a uh, I was medical then, like two thousand two thousand one, like in California. So this is yeah, this like predates <laughs> most of the game, you know. Wow. Yeah, For and sure. I was just into like that's my thing. Like I break shit down and just get into it, and then mm-hmm. start doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little entrepreneurial. Uh... Was it was it more for the love of the weed? Yeah, a hundred percent. I love weed, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I just fuck with the plan I always have, and I just I, am a curious I cat. Love, like I just want to keep. You know what I mean? I do too. <laughs> yeah, I, I just keep. I, I keep going weed. with you know it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, I, lo- I love weed. I, I've I, I talked about it last podcast a little bit with with my guys, but we, um, growing up the way I did, I mean, just a very sh- like once I got out of it, like what a sheltered upbringing. In the sense of like, I just had great parents, um, very f- hyper focused as a student athlete. Yeah, barely party. Yeah, um, but like things like weed, like I was just like, uh, like I was of the thinking, like what the like what the average person thought, you know? Of like, course, yeah. uh, potheads, like you yeah, know, that's whack. Mm-hmm. You guys are lazy. You guys are all lazy. Yeah, you know, like just like corny, like just just small Stereo- mind, just, stereotypes, just small mindedness, yeah. you know. Um, but dude, it's been a fucking lifesaver for me. I mean, creatively, it's been amazing. Um, but I see things with clarity sometimes, with a lot more clarity sometimes when I'm a certain high in a certain moment. Um, he's passing it. Uh, just, just, I see things, I see things from a different place. I'll, I'll double hit it. I'm in the perfect seat. I can just, I can hit it twice every rotation. <laughs> there you go. There you go. This is, pot, this is the pothead seat right here, right in the middle, bro. And, yeah, and nobody, even, nobody even notices that he hits it twice every time it comes that's around. A fact. That's a fact. <laughs> no <For> problem. Sure. <laughs> You're a guest. That's, that's honestly right. where I usually sit, right? Is it? Or, I mean, <laughs> sometimes, a lot of times, like, I have athletes, we'll do these, like, more serious one-on-ones. Yeah, yeah. I do them up in the studio. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, but this shit is like more like kind of the kick it air, like vibe, get high, talk about life type thing. Yeah, that's right. No, it's it's perfect. Yeah, we're gonna have you back on, bro. You gotta come again and again. I'm down, bro. You, you see, I, I'm, I'm here. The world. I'm you're close. Seeing the world in a in the similar light. I just yeah. I just filled my Smirnoff ice bottle with smoke, and it's just still in there. Now, like now you got right now you got to chug it. Do you think Smirnoff? Well, no, I was gonna say. Do you think anyone's? Uh, <laughs> oh, it is stuck in there. Do you think anyone's smoked weed out of a Smirnoff ice bottle before? 100%. I don't know. Can you do I've it? I've actually <laughs> seen a Smirnoff ice bong before. So there you go. Okay. So get I'm over yourself. Go get over yourself somebody. And, ch- and chug that shit. <laughs> somebody. <did it. laughs> I just want to know if I'm the first guy to do this. Are you gonna chug it or not? I know I'm the first guy to snort weed. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
How'd that work out? I watched him snort it. <laughs> it didn't work out. It didn't work out well at all. I mean, it actually could have gone way worse, Kilmer. Could have gone way worse. It wasn't that bad. No, I didn't have any long term effects. You were just a little. You were just like a little. He was like disheveled for like an hour. He was just like. Well, yeah, it's a it's an irritant. And then back in Joshua Tree, I snorted acid, which. Also not a great idea. Wasn't a great idea. <laughs> Kilmer thought he was a jellyfish and uh and you snorted acid? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> has anyone ever done that before? I'm sure. I sure haven't. I haven't done it personally, no. Um, but I'm sure somebody has. Well, to be Just fair because of the counterculture to movement. To be fair, it was like there were like the uh it was like the edible like what was it like, Kilmer? What was it? What they were in sugar cubes. Yeah, there was oh, sugar you snorted cubes. The sugar cubes. And it like yeah. broke down. So like to take it, oh, your this is getting high though, regardless. For yeah. sure, but it was also like sugar. You know what I mean? So there was sugar. It was. It was. Yeah, what don't I mean by like snorting it, it was like kind of one of those textures that like at least it made sense oh, for yeah, the people yeah, listening. Yeah, the sugar the burns listening. though, man. Yeah, but that's, that acid is gonna hit you faster than. Oh, I know. I was snorting ever. pixie sticks when I was a little kid. I know the deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're a legend. I'd be so smart if I didn't do that shit. Kilmer thought it was a jellyfish, and then we came back and researched can see, it. Can I see the J so I can fill this back up? Yeah, we came back and researched it, and w remember that shit, Kilmer? You showed me about the jellyfish? Oh, yeah. I mean, that was like my vision quest when I was uh, out there in Joshua Tree. He just, I, kept, he just kept saying, I'm a jellyfish. It yeah, made no sense. I don't know. I like legit Kilmer's the only one that gets like really sloppy, like white girl, like weird when he gets all fucked up. Like, I wouldn't just say sloppy's the word. Sloppy. You weren't sloppy at blue? To me, sloppy. Dude, you were fucking laying on the ground. To me, ah. Yeah, I think to me, sloppy like gets sick and like like acts like a fool. Like, I mean, you definitely acted like a fool, but I don't know if you got sick. Not in a negative I'm not way, saying though. you were, I'm not saying, it, okay, yeah. let me clarify. It's not negative. It's amazing. It's not, it's, it's like actually, ex it's exciting to be around. You know what I mean? At the same time, like you're not getting, you're not being an annoyance. It's yeah. funny as hell. It's entertaining. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see sloppy as like negative. Bro, we were standing outside, just we were we were fu we were <laughs> fucked up standing outside, just watching you. We were like, yo, this is fucking legendary. You were just like frolicking oh, yeah. around the living room. So, anyways, yeah, that's you I, were just I, on another level, bro, in another realm. I mean, I, I I took it as my spirit animal, and I went home and I looked it up. Like, what's a jellyfish? Oh, it was. It's exactly, dude. It it, it, it exactly. exactly was him to a T. Really, his personality. Yeah. Yeah. Can you pull it up? Oh, oh, we'll continue. Can I, can I hit this first? Chug that hit and that. then pull it up and read us the jellyfish. Oh, Jesus, it's gonna be crazy. Chuck, 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 Chuck. <laughs> Nicely done. And he hit the smoke after. Wow. <coughs> Impressive. Impressive. <coughs> oh, man. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Lemon line rush, dude. That's it. <laughs> Lem oh, you're a legend. I love you for doing it. <laughs> Man. We're going to have to turn off Kilmer's mic because he's going to be coughing all the time. Uh. <laughs> he's going to be coughing the whole time. You want, uh. Do you need a cold American beer to wash it down? Someone tell my girlfriend we're not going to Ikea after this. <laughs> Swedish meatballs. What, what, what are you guys going to get? <coughs> we're not going to make it to Ikea, babe. I don't know if we'll have enough time. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. That's fucking good. Look up to Jellyfish if you have any motor skills. Um, so what the fuck else were we just talking about? Um, Life. Now, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> Fuck, fucking, fucking life. Nailed it. Um, so as you moved on from acting and you kind of like had this like, I guess you call it like, not even epiphany, just like, oh, like I, I, I want to go experience different things. You know, what was next? And like what were in your mind, if you can think back, I mean, if you, if you want to like, this is kind of what I want to get into is just like. What was your psyche like? What what were the down? What were the hard parts like? And what what did you think? What did you think about like as you were going through the transition? Because I you know I talk about this a lot with the with the athletes. All the everybody has those moments where they're like, I don't know, man. Like when the dude like his broke his knee in half, or the dude had cancer, and he's just like, I, you know, you have like what was the doubt? You know, where were your doubts lying? And like what? How did you get to where you got next? You know, like. Uh, you know, I'm a big believer in just is doing what you got on your plate for that day to like, you know, the best of your ability. Yeah. And that's life. You know it. what I'm saying? Like, you just kind of got to follow the breadcrumbs as they get left behind for you and be like, okay, I'm supposed to do this next and this next. And you'd be amazed where these things take you if you kind of, uh, that's crazy. 
just follow along, you know? Well put, well put. Yeah. That's, yeah, no, that's, that's... I don't have too much doubt. I'm, like, forward thinking, you know what I'm saying? That's so great. I can get in my head about shit, but, like... That's what great. What good is that going to do? Amazing. Keep running, bro. That's that's really, like... Honestly, that's more or less our whole shit. It's crazy. Our whole shit, this tattoo is Keep Going. Yeah. And our my next album is called Keep Going. That's and, it. And, like, my whole you know, like branding, everything I talk about is a sticker on that. It says, keep going. It's just like through whatever, like no matter what your experience is that day, yeah. like there's just something to gain. Uh -huh. You know, there's, there's always, there's always a step forward to take even when you feel like you're fucking falling backwards. Exactly. You know? And a lot of times your biggest steps forward are only because you fell to a point where you could see that the other way was the way, yeah. you know? So like for me, that would, that, that's how I feel. And I wouldn't, the reason all this shit clicks so much for me is because now when I look back at my life in hindsight, I'm like, holy fuck, that's exactly what it was. You know, like, I fucking remember having that injury and shit, and I was just like, why? Why did that happen? Like, I'd fucking work my ass off the entire time, right before I get drafted, right before I get drafted. Like, I made it 21 years of just, like, I dominated, you know, more or less, and I was just, like, ready to go on. I was from a place, Rhode Island, where no one really gets to the play professionally, really? yeah. you know? Like, it's small a place. small place, and yeah. it's not baseball weather, it's cold. No, not at all, yeah. So it's like, it's very rare. And I like knew I could do it my whole life, and I was about to do it, and then it just, one moment goes away. Yeah. And like, now, I look back at that like, fucking thank God. Even if I was in the big leagues and like had 10 times more money, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't be as happy. You're living the life you're living right now. I wouldn't be nearly as happy. No, because I know all my my homies. That like my homies, yeah. they say it. They're just like, yo, if you think about think about this. Playing. I've been talking about baseball a lot. Think about this shit. You're in the prime of your life. You're you're making fucking more money than you can even spend, and you're not. Most of the guys aren't flashy type dudes, right? Literally ten months, nine and a half to ten months of the year, they can't do shit. They're on an incredibly physically and mentally taxing schedule, traveling every fucking three days, living hotel to hotel to hotel to hotel, playing games through the entire prime of your life. You start families, you have kids, you have all this money and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to fucking like, and the guys love the game, but it's just like, Maybe you don't have to play 160 fucking games in a regular season. Maybe you play fucking 50 and let people have lives. I guarantee everyone will perform better. It will be a more exciting game. It will be a more exciting game if there's 50 fucking games. They're rested. They had family time. They're, they're mentally prepared, mentally invested in the moment because they know it's, it's not 160 game season. You pace yourself, you know? Like, it's, it's human... It's human. Like, I know these fuckers. I know them. Yeah, it's like, incredibly, it's I played incredibly. It at that level, no, I didn't play that many games, but I just know, like, dog, it's just like you, you get to an age and you're like, yo, I want to live life. I can't even fuck it. And then, like, the two months you have off, you're just trying to spend time with the people you haven't seen and, like, relax. Mm -hmm. So, like, then what are you really seeing? So these guys go back and then they retire and they're like, I mean, the guys who do it right get out healthy still and they get out um, and they're ready to go like explore, you know? But a lot of guys are just like, are so in love with the game, it's all they know, you know? To me personally, with my experience and where my career has gone, it's like, I'm so thankful that I got to see that there's like so much more to life. I don't know if I would have. Maybe I would have been one of those guys who just like played, didn't know anybody really, you know? And, and then after I'd be like, yeah, I'll be a coach or an analyst. Like, fuck that shit. Yeah, you know, no. like you gotta go on and do all this shit that you couldn't do. Yeah. And I feel like I got a chance at that. Look at, that's really my genuine outlook. Yeah. And like, that's coming off something I thought was the worst day of my life. Yeah. You know? It's when, always the worst day of your life that changes the direction, you know? Facts. Like, that yeah. changes the, you just yeah. got hit by a... It's a pivot. Yeah. <laughs> you in a different direction now, bro. You, mm -hmm. you flow in different life, bumped you into another, yeah. another thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it breaks you down and then, yeah. you know. But the optimism, like, I, I did have, I, I didn't think like this then, but I did, I just had optimism. That's you it. Know? And as you say, like, you kind of. You have to keep that, though. I looked back at it, I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I got here because I was optimistic. Because it can destroy you or it can just be yeah. like, okay, well, this I'll, is just, I'm on another path. Yeah. 
you want it to be a, yeah. a, a slingshot or you want it to be a hindrance? Because it can be either, you know? Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. All the shit, all the shit I read, all the shit I consume is all about this shit. Are you are you into this? Are you just naturally like this? Are you are you into any literature or like content on how have you got to I haven't been this reading outlet? as much lately. Obviously I like I can't help but like just right get a content these days. Um mm-hmm. I have a crazy ass memory, so obviously it helps with acting and anything else as well. Oh, for so sure. So when it comes to anything like that, I just remember everything that I hear or see or That's, a, that's an amazing skill. Yeah, it helps. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um but I, I, I was big into like non nonfiction. So for those periods of my life where I read like every book in the on the shelf, you know. Yeah, I'm not stuff. a non fiction. I'm a not a non fiction guy either. Yeah. I mean, I, wait, you're not a fiction guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah you yeah. love non fiction. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, all the psychological self help improvement, right. this that spiritual. Mm-hmm. I've always been into like spiritual stuff. Man, religious, crazy. different religions, everything else. Like yeah. it, you know. I just, dude, I, I didn't know I had it in me really. It's crazy. Yeah, and Can't, then it takes I you mean, down this thing, and you're like, okay. Really, it's been it's been awesome, and luckily, you know, we have a f- pretty cool dynamic. Like we're pretty wild motherfuckers too. So yeah. like, it's both. You get what I mean? Yeah. I feel like I have a great balance now, yeah, where yeah. I wouldn't want to go too far down the spiritual route. I wouldn't want to go too far down the party route. You get yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like having the balance is is what's made it feel special and like make it feel like. I'm uh, keeping my identity, and and it's not like altering too much. I mean, not that altering is bad, just altering too sacrament much. Sacrament should enhance the spirituality aspect. Yeah, no facts. That's what you know. Yeah, exactly. You're a big rap guy, big hip hop guy, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's my and what's like bass what's, music. What's your type? What's your favorite type shit of rap? Um, just some some real shit, you know, some G shit. Yeah, like I like it. Don't matter like, what give region. Me like, give me like it doesn't a few matter because I fuck with, with I fuck with uh, everybody from every region doing what they were doing at that time that was popping. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Good music. Mm-hmm. It like, doesn't matter whether it's like old school grimy mob deep New York shit. Do you like shit. the new shit? Some of it, of course. Yeah. You know, like who? Who do you like in the new? Who world? do I like in the new? I mean, what's considered new? I mean, I just mean like, Gucci's been around forever, but he's like, you like Gucci? new, new popping right now. I mean, he's. I mean, I think Gucci. He created trap Gucci's music, been you know. Popping, yeah, he Way was like before. a street icon. Are you talking about like the young cats? Yeah, like just in general. Like I know hey, you were in the Log- you were in a Logic video. Yeah, right? that shit was dope. Logic's yeah. next level, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? As far as rapping is concerned, he is. Yes, it's uh, something else. You know, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, meant here. He's meant here to rap very fast and just rap all over the fucking place. Yeah, yeah, just. Fucking solve Rubik's cubes and shit. Yeah, that- <laughs> right. But you like Blueface? Uh, I fuck with Blueface because that's some LA shit. You yeah, know what is. I'm saying? So like, you could be a hater about it, and he's all over the place, and it is what it is. But that's some mid city crip LA shit, bro. Yeah. And if you fuck with the vibe, then that's it. You know, that's why he's popping right now. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, good looking kid. The music's yeah. popping. I mean, dude, that's real shit. I've grown to like, dude. I'm, I, 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 can't, I, I can't hate on shit. No, you can't. I just can't. Like I, and I, I grow. Like honestly, that outlook of like stopping. I realized I, I had to judge everything. Like I yeah, was just but like that's the thing. I was like judging everything. Every song, I'd be like, oh, that was really, like just fucking chill. Fuck these about boxes, bro. It. And I started like like I started liking so much more and enjoying so much yeah. more. And I just I really it's been. I mean, I still do it. I'm not I'm not perfect by any means, but I, I definitely feel like it's been like. Something that makes me enjoy life. It helps you enjoy life more when you just 100%, like. Hundred percent, bro. You just quit analyzing everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because it's not a it's not a competition. It's not. It's actually the opposite. Yeah, we're <laughs> supposed to just create and leave it at that and keep it moving and, and create more. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, from music, you know that like making Sorry, songs and really. composing stuff is that's that's energy, bro. That's vibrations. That's why it's so powerful, mm-hmm. and that's why these exactly temples right. of things like exactly i could right. fuck with any type of of artist because if they hit the right the right notes in the right sequence we're gonna be on it bro yeah. that's we're we're like Fact. instinctually drawn to this Fact. thing you know You're exactly right that's the beat that's the rhythm that's the tempo that's mm-hmm. why bpm and everything is controlled You're exactly right controlling us there's a lot of factors that are just yeah it's actually more like math like obviously i make music with a lot of producers who yeah i mean writers even there, there's a mathematical approach of to course. what melodies you yeah. know make people feel a certain way uh-huh um which is cool it's crazy how dude we gotta we gotta gotta come again we gotta, we yeah i would love again. yeah i'd we love to it's again. awesome talk about what what you, you just made an appearance you did it you were in the logic video 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Eminem. homicide video with Eminem and Crystalia. Well, how was the vibe? Was it just a blast? It was incredible, bro. I mean, it's uh-huh. like some just uh-huh. some weird, random, a bunch of things happened the right way to have that happen, and everybody was on board. And uh, you do look like fucking Logic, man. It's crazy, right? Yeah, it's we got the same like similar now, smile like, and everything it. else. So, yeah. Yeah. did you have to memorize all those lyrics in that verse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Bobby's he's first. Got that, he's got that good. memory. Do you got yeah. it down right now? Do you this, do is it? Awful, this is awful thing to ask when you're high. But like, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be as fast. It's about eighteen thousand words, but do you know? Do you, can you remember it? I mean, if we uh, put the beat on and everything, yeah, I, it's ingrained in my brain. I'm sure. Put the beat on. <laughs> I'll just play the song. Put the fucking beat on. I'll just play okay, the song. See. I'm just. <laughs> it's just so fast and like. Uh, I heard in an interview like they offered to like slow it slow down, it for down. You and you're yeah, like, yeah. nah. You're a legend. I can't. I'm yeah, nah. Let's do it real time. It. Yo, when we did the video, that was like where's my phone? The Second Street Tunnel and the Seventh Street Bridge, and we did the whole song all the way through, real really? time. That's so you can, like, and it was rap. like 90 degrees so you can, like, outside. Rap. You can definitely. Rap. <laughs> I got it right here. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! All right. All right. Let's do this shit. Do I have to do the bobby the bobby hands too? Do it, yeah, you should do it all. <laughs> Whatever you're comfortable with. Hat with a semi-automatic with a hat and he ready for anybody to buck back. I wanna catch a vibe in the way in hell even nobody alive. It's just I know, fuck that. Coming for your man and his lady and even the baby. I'm feeling like I'm foaming at the mouth, ain't nobody taking me out. Every single rapper in the industry, I ain't know what I'm about, and I dare you to test me. Cause not a single one of you motherfuckers impressed me, and maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Innovation, Jeez. I'm tired of all of this high school, he's cool, he's not rap shit. Can a single one of you motherfuckers even rap shit? It's literally logic. That's like, the thing. It's so logic. Shit slam. Like I'm on to the flame, I'm a rhythm and a killing and a feeling and it's I'm spilling and I'm feeling myself. Yeah, yeah, Bobby boy, he been feeling himself. That's murder like this can't be good for my health. Do I sound Love like that. this so it don't really matter cause I'm killing this shit? <laughs> I'm killing this shit. Oh Cut the music. <laughs> it's good stuff. Whoa. Good stuff. This guy got the sauce, man. He got the sauce. That was insane. I need uh, I need some squints. So that's some squints gear right there. Show, show him the shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's from well, my... Uh, you know, well, you, we that's from get, my straight up cannabis flower line. We should get a link. We'll get a link. We should set up. Like, fans will... We'll buy this shit. We'll set it up for the podcast. We'll talk. Okay, cool. Yeah. We'll, like, have it, you know, doing... You know, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, but uh, I need some. I need some of those. I got you. No problem. And yeah. um, I'm gonna get you some flour too. I'm also I know you gonna, like to I'm gonna hold you too. I want you to say it on record right now. What you, he went? He came in the house and saw all the jerseys. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, one hundred. I have a. I have like a Sandlot. Uh, probably from the tour. I have a few jerseys from the tour from from Major League. So, mm-hmm. who's your favorite team? And uh, I mean, it changes because my best friend is is a Marcus Stroman. He's a player for the Blue Jays. Okay, but he just got traded to the Mets. Okay, so I'm a Mets fan, but are I'm also, Mets Red fan? Sox are, are where I'm from. Okay, so yeah. like Red Sox, yeah, yeah. but I root for where, t- which team he's on. That's like my dog. My okay, bro. cool. Yeah. yeah, I have a few uh, pro jerseys, so I'm gonna get all the guys from Sandlot to sign it. I didn't know you were a Jersey guy, but that that's jersey's perfect. that jersey's going up on the. You know that that's going right up. We we call the house Stevenson Ranch. Yeah, because everyone acts like animals here. Uh, but we. Uh, up there, that's going right in like the bar. That's just where we get fucked up. That's what's up. So that's. that's I want to come out to the parties too. You're not just worried that we gotta come to, come for a party. You're definitely you know? coming to a party. Hang out. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely gotta come to a party. I really appreciate you doing this. I'm fucking. No, really it was a happy. blast. It was really, really happy. fun. It was yeah. amazing. And we'll do it again for sure. Anything you want to plug? Say it. Say it. With the fans. Uh, Squints I know you, Cannabis. Mm-hmm. Uh, Squints CBD. That'll be coming out soon. I mean, you could just check my Instagram at Squints. At squints. Uh, yeah, just at squints. And that's how we got connected, man. That's the yeah. beautiful part about social media. You could say a lot of negative things. There's a lot of negative things about it. It could obviously. be, but I could touch anybody tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. About anything. For sure. You know, and if they if that's what's meant to be, that's what happens. For sure. You know? For sure. Well, you commented on, on my post and I saw it. And that's that's how it happened. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. And here we are, like two that's weeks it. later. There you, you know. go. Um appreciate you, bro. And we'll Thank do it you. again. Same, bro. All right. Yeah. Good stuff.